Before you touch on the song to sing it, what you should know that is the concept of brain singing. That is knowledge doing the singing okay. before your voice does it. Okay. So what you should have in your head before you, you touch on the song to do that is what we mean by brain singing. Sounds interesting, and I believe today we are going to be educated and blessed as well. So let us go through what you've got for us today. So let's create a scenario where you are a disc jockey and um, you are invited for a program. Say a wealthy man has come from overseas and he's called his pals and they are to have a party, home party. Mm -hmm. Then you as the DJ, you hit a song like Boga Boga Ena Ye De Ena Ube Ye Ape. You see? You ask yourself, a rich man has hired you to play a song for his home party, and you are playing a song asking the the, the, the rich man if he is rich and so what. Yeah. <laughs> Another one, imagine uh, you being invited for uh, an outdooring program, a baby's outdoor. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. you are to play songs of joy. You hit your laptop, and the song that comes out is. You ask yourself, what are they going to feel? Yes. Like, how is the feeling going to be? Number two, a preacher mounts the platform, stands behind the pulpit. He, he starts invoking scriptures. John 11, 35, Jesus wept. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 3 16 for God's love. Then he comes to ask us, where is he going with all these scriptures? You wouldn't fathom with what will be happening, right? Exactly. And so the beauty of these two instances will be that the DJ would play songs of joy that is commemorating the arrival of the rich man. And then uh, uh, helping the mood they want to create with that celebration. Mm -hmm. Just to spare the people yeah. the event. Again, you would you would want to play songs that fit the occasion. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, as the DJ. Mm -hmm. And two, as the preacher, you would want to bring up scriptures that that talk thematically or topically. If it is a revelational teaching. It should be going somewhere. It shouldn't be random. This one talking about that. Just because they're all coming from the Bible doesn't mean you are preaching or teaching. Yeah. The same applies to singing. Okay. You go to a church and someone is doing adoration. The person goes like, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Then suddenly, Shebres is halfway. Share and you are saying, Oh man, <laughs> it is happening here and there in so many places okay. in, in, in churches today. Mm. Just because it's adoration means saying anything, so that is the concept. Okay. But we cannot keep doing that to, to our music ministry. Mm. 
that is why this channel is set up to talk about some of these things and then educate ourselves on what we should do as people of God and uh, those ones who want to take music professional. Yeah, very well. Yeah. So I have my notes here and then we'll be going through a lot of things. The third one I would want us to talk about is like cooking. Music is like cooking. Mm -hmm. There are two instances of cooking I would want us to talk about. Number one, you have Mr. A having his kitchen and then Mr. B having her kitchen. Now, Mr. A wants to eat something, but Mr. Uh, Mrs. B has something also she want to eat. Mr. A wants to eat a particular food. Then he goes out there to buy the ingredients. But Mrs. B doesn't have enough money. So she goes to the kitchen to survey which kind of foodstuffs are in the kitchen before she will decide on what to cook. Which of these two do you think on a normal day, all things being equal, would enjoy the meal better? Mrs. B, who is going to her kitchen to find out what she has before she decides on what to I don't think so. In that sense, she cannot shoot in case she has appetite for a certain food. Mm -hmm. Then she bumps into the kitchen and the ingredients there cannot help her cook that food. Okay. It means she will have to relinquish her she appetite decides. for that food, All her right. desires, okay. and then cook what the ingredients can help. But Mr. A decides on what he wants to eat. Then based on his desire or appetite, he goes out there to get the food stuff. Do you agree with yeah, me now? Okay. How does these examples relate to music? Here is one person in, invited to uh, sing in a program in a church A, another one in a church B. The first man looks at the program, decides on the song to sing based on the theme of the program. The other one thinks he's so good to the point that he can do anything. So he. He, he doesn't rehearse, he goes to the church, and whilst the program is in session, he's called up and then he sings anything that comes to mind. Which of these two do you think is doing something professionally and efficiently? I believe the one who rehearsed and picked songs for the event. That is how so many musicians, even professionals, are over relying on their talent and they are setting very bad examples for those ones who are coming after them and their contemporaries alike to do what is unworthy and unfit in the household. Now, come to think of it, music is like an offering you are giving to God in that service. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, imagine you want to go to somebody's birthday party, you don't plan, you just get up, you look for anything in your room and take it up, they are going to give to the person as his or her present. We were saying it takes proper planning. Okay. You see that yes. you planned well before you did it. Mm -hmm. It 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 puts some essence and glory on the thing. So if musicians and singers can start thinking that the service they are doing is like a sacrifice, mm -hmm. an offering on an altar unto God, they should prepare very well and they will prepare very well. Yes, for sure. But if you start thinking like I'm the only singer in my church i sing better i'm the one with the greater talent or uh, where i've read in this ministry i'm always getting collapse and so there is no need for me to go through any stress to build myself up you're doing your own self a great damage because you are presenting a sacrifice before a great king yes. so everything matters very well i with me. so well. that is the allusions we are making to today's lectures that people need to listen to what we are going to share and then start putting these things into their lives and their ministry. And it's going to turn around the gospel ministry and make it the blessing that we used to be. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, Jesus is Lord. Yes. Now, we're going to talk about what are some of the importance of putting what we are going to learn into practice. Yes. Number one, to complement the composer's move. I call it the move because there is more often always something that pushed someone to pen down some lyrics mm. and so you see what got you to love the song was the way it was presented okay. so you come to ask yourself 
why am I also in love with this song that I'm going to perform? So you see that the efficiency of this uh, question is your ability to buy into the mind of the lyricist or the composer or the singer of the song and then bring the brains of that person into your performance so that someone else who is also watching you will feel the impact you have when you listen to the original singer and fell in love with the song. But it's unfortunate we just hear songs it's either the tune or something and we just jump just on the song. Yeah. Are you with me? So if, if we listen to what we are going to do, you, you can just do justice to this. When you are singing it, you bring out the same impact like the one that sang it. Perhaps more. Mm -hmm. Number two, you, you can be able to choose the right song for the right program. Like we, we indicated earlier on. Say you were a DJ and you're supposed to play a happy song for a rich man and you are playing a song that that, that ask unnecessary questions about this world. You see my point? Yes. So if you have this knowledge about the importance of brain singing, you know that this is the program I'm called to, and these are the songs I cannot sing, and these are the songs I cannot sing. sing. Yes. Number three, you can choose the right song for the right service session. You see, there is one thing going for the program, then number two, you ask yourself, which session in the service am I to minister? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. I can be called to uh, an evangelistic program where we are going to preach to people to come to Christ. That is the program. But if I'm called to do the worship or the adoration, I cannot just speak any song because it's an evangelism program. Okay. Are you with me? Meaning you, what um, we are literally doing should not succumb to what you are about ministering with or what. Or the person it, should it choose any, any kind of song relating to the evangelism and just be singing it to the audience. If we are to refer to the second point, choosing the right song for the right program. Mm -hmm. If you just consider that it is an evangelism program, so you're choosing any song that preaches or teaches or evangelizes, according to the second point, that is correct. But the third point is choosing the right song for the right session in the service. Okay. So in this case, it's an evangelism program, mm -hmm. but you have to do the adoration. Okay. So yeah. adoration is strictly unto God. God. So in that sense, the evangelism idea does not come in your performance. Mm -hmm. But let's say if you are called to be a soloist, then you can sing a song relating to the evangelism. Oh, sure. Are you with me? So if you have this knowledge, the second one cannot push you to do something silly just because you are obeying a certain rule. You get the sublime rule, which is to have advanced knowledge, choosing the right song for the right session in the service. Now, the fourth one is, it will aid professional lyricists write doctrinally efficient lyrics. Mm -hmm. Say you want to be an artist from today. Now, it's going to aid you on how to write your lyrics right now we are going to talk about lyrics right so the whole uh, episode is about lyrics so if you have this knowledge and now you want to start writing songs putting these elements together i think that our gospel music trend is going to change you won't just sit down and cook words just because you see there are people who write songs not because they cannot in quotes write quality songs but because they think they are those songs that will sell. Mm -hmm. So you see, imagine you are God and you've called someone, giving that person grace to sing. And the person betrays you by saying that if I sing the songs you'll be happy with, I won't get my money. Okay. And so to get people to play my song everywhere, you must, uh, I must play songs they will like, not those ones that will speak about you. You get a feel, yeah. but if these teachings keep moving into society, you have people go want to change them to do the right thing, so that the whole industry will start changing. Because you don't feel any sense of guilt, you don't feel any sense of your person in what you're doing. Everything is graceful. Showmanship, or you know, yeah, all those things will serve 
a spirit of God and the knowledge you have. You will not depend on them to please people. Right. So all of that will be subjected to the obedience of Christ. Beautiful. Reverend Minister. Hallelujah. So on this note, we will uh, start with reviewing songs and today is on brain singing which i indicated earlier that it doesn't mean your brain literally singing but knowledge doing the singing before your voice that's the singing all right and the foremost important thing to consider when it comes to songs the lyrics the lyrics every field of study has got its own jargons or technical terminology and in music we call the words that are in a song as lyrics lyrics yeah okay the first thing to consider about a song's lyrics is or are the source or sources of the song lyrics yes there could be a one source or more than one source to the lyrics of a song in other words how did the songwriter come up with those lyrics? Yeah. Something must have produced the lyrics. Okay. There should be something that moved the writer to pen down those lyrics. And so you are going to delve using certain ideas into the mind of the songwriter and know why he or she wrote those lyrics. And so when you're able to find them efficiently, you are likely to produce the same result that the songwriter produced and perhaps more. And so having done uh, a little survey, it is seen that a lot of our gospel songs are coming from the Bible. Yes. The Holy Bible. Yes. And there are two ways by which people extract lyrics from the Bible. I term the first one as in, uh, explicit extraction, and then the second one as implicit extraction. Now, the explicit in this sense means that it is taken directly from the Bible. Okay, so, so go ahead and take exact words exactly. from the Bible and the minister with it. As a song. Okay. For example, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. So if you are home, you get your Bibles with us and then we move. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? So, mm -hmm. yes, but you remember a track like Shabadabam, Shabadabam, Shabadabadam, Bandam. Shada, shaba da bam, shaba da bam, shaba da ba dam, dan dan, dan dan. Jen and Bernice. Among the gods, among the gods, who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Hallelujah. We are seeing a minu, oh, we need soon. Do you see it? This is a direct extraction. Wow. They are the exact words in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Number two, let's take another example from mm -hmm. Psalms 11989. Okay. Psalms 11989. It says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Yeah. So you have a popular song like Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Do you see that exact word? Exact word from the Bible. Interesting. Let's take some last one and see how we do And even this one, uh, Jane and Benny still did the key version. Oh, forever, O oh Lord, I already said it. Assemble tin tin, assemble tin tin, assemble tin tin. Da deni na, a tin tin wo also ro. Oh wow! You you get it. Now let's take another one in Psalm hundred four and five. 
Psalms 100, 4 and 5. I read this. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. So, notice what you just read. Mm -hmm. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. in my heart, and then he is called with praise. Mm -hmm. Now, take another one in Psalms 118 24. Okay. 24. Psalms 118 24. This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, you see, joining these two scriptures in Psalms 104 and 5. And Psalms 118.24, we have this one. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Oh, wow. I will enter his court with praise. Then, Psalm 118 verse 24. And I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. You see that? Wow, yeah. Two parts of the song, all taken directly. So when I say explicit extractions from the Bible mm -hmm. and uh, sources of lyrics in brain singing and the reviewing of songs, this is what I mean word to word. Mm -hmm. The it's first one has taken it word to word. Word to word. Word to word. Yeah. Now the part B of the explicit extractions is the story to words. Mm -hmm. The person takes a story from the scripture, weaves the words into lyrics. Mm -hmm. For example, I have in Luke 8, 24 and 25. Luke 8, 24 and 25. Says, and they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. So we see that in this scripture, we see what Jesus did. Yeah. Having been called up, he gets up, raises his hands, and calms mm -hmm. the storm. Now let's take another scripture in Exodus 14, 7. Please. And he took 600 chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and the Egyptians over every one of them drowned.